me fall down, baby Make me fall down, baby I want it all Just give me a go, baby Give me a headband And I know, actually, he gets a lot of hate, too, from people for being really cheesy. But um, I admire him because, well, one, he does it, he does it unapologetically, and he's unapologetically pop. But um, I also admire him because he's sort of one of the one of the original MySpace artists, MySpace bedroom artists, and I I listened to his stuff like when he first started coming out on MySpace and YouTube and all that when he was still producing in his bedroom, and um, just to sort of see the progression to where he is today, it's very inspiring. So I would love to you know work with him. Um, there's other artists like Frank Music, you know, small artists and stuff like that. Yeah, that's amazing. You talk about the progression because I don't. I think a lot of people who like just listen to the radio don't really understand. Like, there's there's no such thing as an overnight success, really. Like, it's a it's a process. Okay. It's yeah. a process. It takes time. It takes years to mm-hmm. to be, to become where you are. Uh, yeah, dude, it's a very long process. And like, even even within even with um, acts that seem like they're overnight successes, they're not overnight successes. You know, it, it takes more than just a night or just a week or a few days to to get to that point. Um, and then it also takes a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of, you know, connections and stuff like that. Like, the people the people who are generally um, touted as artists that have had overnight success, you know, they're not really... They didn't really have overnight success. They knew the right people. They had the right amount of money. You know, they had... They were in the right place at the right time. You know, there's a lot of different factors that kind of come into that type of stuff. And again, it's really nice to see the. Pro- I, th- I think it's more impressive to me to see the progression of an artist from, you know, humble beginnings up to, you know, being a celebrity status or mainstream or something like that. Because right. you can kind of you can connect with it. Like an average person can connect with starting from nowhere and coming up. You know, like Drake said, you know, start from the bottom. Now we here. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it, yeah, it's it's truthful though. It's you there's a lot that goes into it you know like a lot of a lot of politics too like there's i think something that a lot of people don't understand about the music industry or just the entertainment industry in general is that there's a lot of politics that go on behind the scenes and a lot of you know a lot of stuff as far as business is concerned um payola money there's a lot of money that goes on like goes back and forth between people you know for for placement and you know promotion and stuff like that mm-hmm. like i would say if you think something is accidental in the music in, or in the entertainment industry, it's most likely not accidental. It's most likely very, very finely tuned, and it was probably meant to be that way. Hmm. I'm gonna have to think about that now. Next, next time I, I see something that looks a little sketchy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's crazy to think about too, and it's something that I never really thought about too before I started learning about these things and actually being immersed in it myself. But you know, the there's so many people have have huge teams behind them. To um, to give the illusion of something of an accidental success or something accidentally happening, like even you know, like even even a lot of the controversies and stuff like that, like Twitter beefs and things like that. A lot of them are um, you know they're they're just orchestrated by management or people behind them to sort of get publicity. You know, it, it's it's interesting too. You should make sure to watch when a controversy happens and then try to see if one of the people involved has an album coming out soon <laughs> you'll be surprised <laughs> i'm gonna have to look at that now I, i've heard that i've heard that before but it's, it's just interesting coming from you who's actually you know in the music industry uh, saying that most of the time it's just like hear us say you know like from like friends or family or something like that but hearing that come yeah. from you puts a yeah it happens i mean i wouldn't say all of it you know not all of it is um, orchestrated you know not everything is orchestrated all the time but I would say a very large chunk of it is set up by management or people behind <laughs> the scenes. Wow, that's amazing. So, uh, it's, you know, it's it's <laughs> they keep doing it because it works. So yeah, people feed into that type of stuff. It gets it gets headlines on national newspapers and stuff, magazines and stuff like that, websites and everything. People yeah. talk about it on Twitter. It trends. You know. Gets you on TMZ. <laughs> yeah, it gets you on TMZ for better or worse. <laughs> yeah. So what? So when it comes to like you know, you said you wanted to read. Uh, work with a Sia or somebody or an Owl City, how how would it how hard would it be to like reach out to them and like, you know, see if you can get something going? Like how how would that happen? Um I would say it's much harder for a Sia, uh, definitely because she um she's so big. 
that she's pretty much unattainable for for me at the moment she's definitely unattainable but I um, and also I guess for Owl City as well but um, generally with that type of stuff um, I think you most of the time you need to have an in so you need to sort of either be signed to a record label or to a, a publishing company that has contacts with their with Sia's management or Sia's people or Sia's label or you just have to know somebody close to Sia or know Sia herself or maybe know her email and kind of start you know the cold cold emailing could work potentially but you know that type of stuff again it's it's very very network based I feel like a lot of a lot of opportunities in the music industry are, are network based and connection based and who knows do you know somebody who knows this person who knows this person does can this person who knows this person get you in contact with who you want to get in contact with that type of stuff but then there, there are other ways too like you know I think I think the biggest benefit to being in LA um, for me at least what I've I've seen um, in my sort of seven months of being here is uh, like sort of you're you're in LA, so you're where all of these celebrities and all these artists and everyone are. So you're kind of just bound to run into people, to influential people, just by being in the vicinity. You know, like I've been to I've been to studios. Like I've been working out of the, the Kennedy Compound Studio, and I met people like John Legend, CeeLo, just people that kind of come in for for sessions. And you know, you're just there. You just meet them. You make contacts with them. Um, and then I've been to like parties and stuff like that where there are other celebrities, there are other songwriters, other producers, and you just start mingling with anybody who seems interesting, and you find out that they wrote such and such or they produce such and such, and you sort of just establish a connection that way. I think that's the biggest positive to being in LA. Yeah, that's as to kind of working. You know, I could have worked from San Francisco if I wanted to, but being down here, you get the you're in the presence of all these different people that can kind of help you, you know, and you can help them as well. So you find that, like, going out and, like, networking, it's it's crucial, it's essential to to your career? Um, I wouldn't say essential. I would say that having a network is essential. I wouldn't say that going out and physically networking is essential because, for me personally, I'm not very good at that. I'm I'm an introvert, like, through and through. Um, I don't like, I don't, I personally don't like going to parties and, like, doing the whole... Um, hey, what's your name? Like, oh, what, what do you do? Like, that type of thing. I don't really like doing that. It feels it feels disingenuous to me. Also, I get really nervous when I do that type of stuff. But <laughs> I think <laughs> I think that um, I think that just finding ways to network with people, find your own way to network with people, I think is my best advice. You don't have to do what everybody else does. You don't have to you don't have to stand outside of Capitol Records with your with your demo CD in your hand and like waiting for somebody to come out and hand it to them. You know, you don't have to do that. Just find find a way that works for you to establish relationships with people. Because okay. and finding your own way to do it makes it more genuine because you're not trying too hard or you're not trying to be something that you're not. You know? If you're not a if you're not a social uh, social person, if you're an introvert, then find an introverted way of connecting with people. Like like I like I did with Keenan. Like I you know I'm introverted. I reached out to him through. SoundCloud DM, and we talk through email because that's easier for me. But you know, I can meet. You can meet somebody in person. You can meet somebody over in, over email. You can meet somebody over Twitter. You know, there's so many different ways too with the internet that you can you can you can build a strong a strong network of people without physically having to be there. That's that's a really good point, and I'm I'm glad you said that. Um, you know, there are mo- there are multiple different ways to network, and you know that that's a that's a great point. Um, so any- yeah, like most of my, most of my, I would say most of my really good um, friends in music um, down here in LA, I've met through Twitter. Um, my best friend Ryan Curtis, um, I met him on Twitter, probably like three years ago now. Um, I just reached, I don't even remember which one of us reached out to each other, but um, we were just talking about how we loved each other's music and we're like, hey, we should we should collaborate on something. So um, back then, he actually he lived in Scotland. Um, he lives in LA now, but he lived in Scotland back then, and. Um, we just sent stuff back and forth and sort of worked on music over the internet. And see, like now we're best friends. We work on stuff all the time. So. Yeah, I mean that's that's how we became in contact with each other as well. <laughs> yeah, Twitter, Twitter, email, like <laughs> that's all you need, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you know, just wrapping up, you have any other advice for any uh, young up and coming artists or producers? I know you you've said a lot throughout the interview. Um, do you have any any last things that you'd want to add? Um, 
That's a good question. Um, I just, I don't know. I'll just say that I think, like, we live in a society where there's such a black and white, I feel like there's such a black and white image of what we as young people need to go out and do, and we have to be somebody, and we have to, we have to do this, this, and this to get this amount of money and to, like, pay for, pay for college or pay for a house or pay for, you know, apartment and stuff like that. And um, I feel like there can be a lot of pressure for young people, um, and I know I felt it, um, just to kind of find what they're good at and, you know, make a life career out of it. But I, I feel like, you know, if there's something that really, that, you know, really speaks to you from the heart and something that you're really genuinely passionate about, I think you should pursue it because I think, I think we're starting to transition into a phase um, in society where it's okay to pursue your dreams and make a career out of it. Like there's so many people, there's so many people who, like I would say, like I can use a start, like startup culture for a good example. Like this startup culture was it, like barely existed back in like the 80s and 90s and stuff like that. But these days you have so many people um, creating apps and you know, creating websites that go on to, you know, have millions and millions of users, of daily active users, and they make their career based off of that, you know. There's people who left school to do something that, you know, they probably never would have done in a million years in their life, and they're making a career out of it, and they're being successful, you know. I think it's just all about find something that, find that thing that you're passionate about, and Go after it unabashedly and unapologetically. You know, and don't let anybody sort of don't let anybody tear you down or tell you that that you can't do it. If you if it's something that you're really passionate about, you know, you might not be that good at it. You know, that's a reality. But you can get better at it by practice and hard work and you know, if you have something, put it out now. Don't wait don't wait until don't wait until oh it's better, I can make it better. You know, maybe you can make it better. If you can then go for it, but there has to be a point where you where you say, I'm happy with this, this is my art, this is what I'm passionate about, and I want to start taking this somewhere. Mm -hmm. So put it out, you know? Let people hear it, let people see it. Yeah. Let people respond to it, you know? For sure. Well, I want to thank you again for coming on the show. Thank, yeah, you. thank you for having me. Thank you for sharing your passion with us, man. I mean, it, take, it takes a lot to, you know, make something and put it out for the world to, to see and criticize and, and listen to and enjoy. So yeah. I, I appreciate you doing that. Um, can you? Yeah, can thanks, man. I really appreciate it, too. Like, I appreciate you, like, even doing these types of interviews and your channel just exposing unknown songs and unknown artists. It's, it's dope. Like, it's being a, you know, a tastemaker. Yeah, for sure. Um, can you tell the people where they can find you at? Yeah, you can find me um, on all the major social networks, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, SoundCloud, YouTube. I'm under Adian Lewis, all of them, A-D-I-E-N-L-E-W-I-S. Same, same name for every network. You can listen to my music there. Send me a message on Twitter, you know, hit me up, tell me, tell me what you think. I'd love to hear it. All right, excellent. Aiden Lewis, ladies and gentlemen. Produced. A lot of stuff for Rihanna, Chris Brown, Brandy, uh, Jennifer and that type of stuff. He did not forever disturb me all those those songs.